what it says I have. And I will do what it says I can do. Today I'll be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever living seed of the Word of God. And I'll never be the same. Never, never, never. Never be the same. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we're actually in Romans, but I'm going to start out somewhere. Uh, you know, you ought to know why you are so excited about being saved. You know, if you're not as excited about being saved, maybe you don't really understand what happened. The reality of it is, is that you were dead in your trespasses and sin, but God, who is rich in mercy, he looked down on you and said, man, you are jacked up. And so he sent his only son to die on the cross and pay for all of our sin. Say all of them. That's past, present, and future. Some people argue with me, but ain't nobody in hell because of his sin. They're in hell because they didn't recognize God in their lives. They didn't recognize Jesus as a Savior. Amen? But I want to read to you something real quick because I had a question the other day said, well, why should somebody come to Heart of God Fellowship? Did you know I don't want you to come here because of me or because of the music or anything else? I want you to come here because God's called you to be here. Amen? That's the reason. Because God wants you here. And, uh, but I want to read this little thing out of Ezekiel. God dealt with this, the irresponsible shepherds. And I'm going to read this out of the 34th chapter in the New King James then I promise I'll get over to our sermon today. And you know I can't lie, being a pastor. Anyway, and the word of the Lord came to me saying, this is to Ezekiel, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God to the shepherds, Woe to the shepherds of Israel who feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? Now, even though he's dealing with the leaders of Israel right here, can I tell you something? That we are in the last days here. Don't think everybody, because they get up and preach in a church, has your best interest at hand. They just sometimes don't. Do you know why? Because whether you're black, white, red, yellow, short, tall, fat, skinny, don't make any difference. People are just people. And uh, what I want you to know is that when I preach the word here, I want you to listen to it, make it your own. And if you have any problem with any of it, that's okay. That's why I want you reading your Bible and studying it. Amen? But I want to read this to you. So it says, Woe to the shepherds of Israel. You eat the fat and clothe yourselves with the wool. You slaughter the fatlings, but you don't feed the flock. So even then they had a problem with people that would act like they were the leaders and supposed to lead people in the right direction, and yet they weren't doing anything but feeding themselves. Amen? And I want to tell you something. Uh, uh, whether it's Silas, me, or John Clark, or whoever preaches here, can I tell you this? They should be feeding you the Word of God. Now, I want to tell you right now, I can feed you the Word of God, whether you swallow it and make it your own, that's up to you. But I can do this. I'm going to read just a little bit more, and then I'll get in my sermon, I promise. He said, the weak you've not strengthened, nor have you healed those who are sick, nor bound up the broken, nor brought back what was driven away, nor sought what was lost, but with force and cruelty you have ruled them. Somebody asked me one time, who's the boss of heart of God? I said, Jesus. Jesus? Yeah. Aren't you the boss? You've heard me say it a million times. Most of the time I don't know where my Bible or keys are. You don't want somebody like me to be the boss. My, I just have a job. We have people here that clean the bathrooms, and we have people here that preach, but they're just jobs. 
Amen? And uh, so you need to get into the Word and make it your own. He said, so when he talks about it, he said, uh, uh, with force and cruelty you ruled them, so they were scattered because there was no shepherd become, and become food for all the beasts of the field, and they were scattered. My sheep wandered through the mountains on every high hill. Yes, my flock was scattered over the face of the earth, and no one was seeking or searching for them. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, surely because my flock became a prey and my flock became food for every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd, nor did the shepherds search for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves, did not feed my flock. Therefore, O shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand. I will cause them to cease feeding the sheep, and the shepherds will feed themselves no more. For I'll deliver my flock from their mouths, that they may be no longer be food for them. For thus says the Lord God, Indeed, I myself will search for my sheep and seek them out. He sent Jesus to bring back everything into order. There was nobody in the Old Testament that was ever saved beyond faith all the offerings that they made and everything did not really impress God even though they were instructions for them they didn't impress God because they back then they missed out what we read about last week in Romans they missed out of the fact that circumcision of the flesh doesn't mean anything if you get baptized in that water when we have a baptistry service that doesn't mean anything if you don't know the Lord Are you wanting to preach? Yes. No. 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 What, what bread in the bone can't be eat out the flesh. Do what? what? Bread in the bone can't be eat out the flesh. Right. So here's the thing. When people are baptized, it's just a picture that you were buried with him and you were raised to newness of life. That's a picture for the public to see that you've made a decision and you've received Christ. The first baptism that we find out about uh, that really matters in here is what we find in Ephesians as well. I think, uh, I think uh, uh, Silas has been preaching in Ephesians. Can I tell you this? Uh, that word baptism means to be baptized into the Lord, not water baptism. Water baptism just shows what you did in your heart. Circumcision of the flesh back then didn't mean anything if they weren't circumcised in the heart. Amen? So I want to tell you something that you may read about this shepherd or that shepherd that has stolen money, cheated on their wives, everything else. I said something that some people didn't agree with, but that's okay. You don't have to agree with me. Uh, you have a right to be wrong, too. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. Really, I'm just teasing. This one. I don't think I'm right all the time. Most of the time, but not all the time. Uh, let's go to the fifth chapter of the book of Romans. I want us to look in this our relationship with God is based on faith in the belief that what God did, he did for us. <laughs> My nose runneth. So let's get started in the fifth chapter of the book. I'm just teasing, Lord. In the fifth chapter of Romans, therefore, having been justified by faith, having been, what's he telling them? He's telling them this, that, that when you accepted Christ by faith, you were a done deal. Not trying to work out your justification by faith, but knowing that when you received Christ, you were justified by your faith. Amen? He said, now we have peace with God. Well, why did we need peace with God? Because when we were without Christ, we were actually uh, uh, enemies of God. He didn't hate us, but uh, uh, I'm going to stop in the middle of this to say that I cannot believe Lee's here and Nick's here. If you hadn't shown up, I was shutting this church down. Through whom also we have access by faith into this grace. So what do we know about it? Already you know this, don't you? That, that what justified you was believing in God. The same way as we studied in the, in, in the fourth chapter, how 
how Abraham was justified by his faith, believing God. Every offering that was ever given a blood sacrifice, because there couldn't be no uh, deliverance from sin without no redemption apart from the shedding of blood, every offering that was, that was offered in the Old Testament had to be given in faith looking forward to Christ. If he wasn't doing that, what didn't do anything but kill an animal. He said, now we have access by faith into this grace. What? We, now that I've accepted Christ, I always can run to this throne of grace. There's no mediator between me and God the Father but Jesus Christ. And he's already given us his approval. Are you glad about that today? And not only that, he said, uh, this grace in which we stand, what do you stand in? Do you stand in the commandments or do you stand in grace? If you try to stand saying, hey, you know what? I follow the commandments. Then you know what this pastor is going to say? You do lie. Because <laughs> we suck at commandments. God knew what he was doing by saving us through faith uh, uh, to, brought us into this grace, and we are part of this grace church, this grace, not this local body. I'm talking about the church that is established right now. This covenant of grace will not always be here. When we're raptured out of here, guess what? The covenant of grace comes to a halt. Everybody gets saved after that time that we're raptured out of here. We'll have to, as, as Jesus said in the 24th chapter of Matthew, we'll have to endure to the end. You've got to keep your confession right to the end after the rapture happens, but we'll already be in heaven. And we're going to be nice about it. As we're floating up, we're not going to go like this. Na, 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 na. No. <laughs> the reality of it is we're going to heaven. We want to reach as many people for Jesus as we can while we're here. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. There's what we want to do. But we have access, we stand in this grace, and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we also glory in tribulations. Somebody say, stop it. I don't want to get excited about tribulation. Come on, tell you something. When things happen in your life, it is now a wonderful opportunity for you to see God move in a mighty way because many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Amen. Amen. So when you're going through a tough time, don't go like this. Woe is me. Because <laughs> if you come up to me, Phil, if you came up and say, woe is me, I'd just say, no, Phil is you. <laughs> Your name is Phil, not woe. Whenever you feel like saying, whoa, you need to go, whoa, like you would to a horse and stop it, you know. But the reality of we have a very special position with God that we cannot earn but can only receive from God because salvation is a free gift and always will be. After all this teaching, I had a guy talk to me. It hasn't been that long ago. So, yeah, but once you get saved, you ought to act right. Actually, that's, that's a true statement. He says, so you can't just jack up all the time. Yes, you can. Have you read your Bible? <laughs> Here you got people that love God who messed up constantly, and yet God's love is to everlasting. I know when I do stupid stuff. Do you know? Yeah. You don't need the church to come along and go, look what you did. <laughs> can't believe you did that. Even the father is not turning to the son and going like this and say, well, son, did you see what Bob Capps did? Do you believe that guy? No, because I've never done anything that was a surprise to God. He's the all-knowing God. So before he said, let there be light, he knew that someday I would live and I would make stupid mistakes. Amen? So he says... We know that we also glory in tribulations. Know that that tribulation produces perseverance. And perseverance, character. And character, hope. Now, hope does not disappoint 
Because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Aren't you glad you have the Holy Ghost today? For when we were still without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. I mean, anybody, there's always been heroes that would give their life for other people. Amen? Did you know there's always been that? But guess what? The truth about it is Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. In other words, he looked forward into the future and he saw Bob and Linda Gose and said, boy, I got to do something about them. <laughs> well, they're great people, but guess what? There aren't any people in heaven because of how great they are. They're in heaven because of how good Jesus is. Amen? Amen. So, uh, and, and now hope doesn't disappoint. Well, God's poured the Holy Spirit in our hearts. And I want to tell you, somebody said, that's just not easy for me to love. Well, then you better tap into who you really are. Because God is love, and you're filled with it. If you want to get somebody agitated, do what I've done many times when doing counseling for people. I don't really want to call it counseling. They say, can you counsel us? No, I'm not a counselor. But I will meet with you and pray with you and share the word of God with you. But I've told them many times, they'll say, you know, I used to love this man, but I don't love him anymore. And he'll say, I don't like her either. And I said, in reality, the real you loves each other because you're filled with God. And if you're filled with God, really filled with God, you are filled with love. Well, my husband's terrible. We all were terrible in God's eyes, but the truth about it is he still sent his son to save us from our sins. Now, when I say things that, that people, then I got couples in front of me, if you've got a husband that's abusive to his wife or the other way around, I don't say that you have to stay with that person and get yourself beat up all the time. But you do need to trust God. Get out of that situation and trust God. Amen? Why are you only clapping when I say get away from that person? No, no, I'm just, no, I'm just, I'm just teasing. We were still without strength to do time. Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet perhaps for a good man, someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love to order us. And that while we're still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, having now been justified. Say, I've already been justified. By his blood. And then it says, we shall be saved from wrath through him. So when people want to talk about you going through the tribulation, just tell them no. If you've, read, if you've read the book of Revelation, that you know in the 16th chapter, it says that what they're going through is the wrath of God. The angels are told to pour the wrath of God. It's the wrath of God. Can I tell you this? You and I are not appointed to wrath. We have a very special place. Say this. God loves, God loves. me best. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Now I want you to see this thing. God already made peace through Jesus Christ. But the job of us is to say yes to that free gift of salvation, to recognize what God has already done, to say yes to that, and receive his presence in a mighty way. Because what he'll do is even though you were dead in your trespasses and sins, as it says in Ephesians 2, he quickened you. He made you alive. Amen? So though my spirit was dead to God, he was made alive through the blood of Christ. When I said yes to Jesus, to that free gift of salvation, I'm glad. Do you know like why I like free gifts? They don't cost nothing. That was pretty easy, wasn't it? I still remember the time I handed a, a larger bill to somebody to illustrate that. 
And then afterwards, Debbie goes, you could have done that with a dollar bill. <laughs> I just thought it'd have more strength if you gave a 50 or something like that to somebody, you know. So. But from now on, if I ever do that, I'll tap one of you for the money ahead of time and then do it. Okay. <laughs> Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, who was the one man? Adam. Say Adam. Uh, therefore, just through one man, sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, because all sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Oh man, I want you to get this. What did we read in Romans 3.19? That we're not under the law. The third chapter tells us we're not under the law. What does that mean? The law of Moses does not apply to me except for the fact that it said that that came that it might pronounce the whole world guilty before God. You want to know what the law does? When I say the law, what am I talking about? The Ten Commandments. What does the Ten Commandments do? Point you and I out as sinners. There used to be a teaching that people argued with, but I kind of believed it about the total depravity of man. Apart from God, we're not good. It even we read that in, in, uh, in the same third chapter when he said, there's none good, no, not one. No one seeks after me. Somebody without Christ might say, really, really I'm basically a good person. And then you can very kindly say, you stink. <laughs> no, don't say that. But apart from God, there can't be goodness. There can be things I can do in the flesh to help people. That's the reason you got people that are non-believers that act pretty good. They act better than some believers do. But in their spirit, they're not good. They're dead to God. You cannot work your way to heaven. You can sing in this choir. You can teach the Bible here. You can do all that. But apart from Christ, you're still lost. It's not what we do. It's us trusting in what he did. Amen? <clears throat> Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who is a type of him who was to come. But the free gift is not like the offense, for if by one man's offense, what man? Adam? Yes. If by one man's offense many died, much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. So sin spread because of Adam. And because of sin spread, so did death. But because of the free gift that we get through the grace of Christ, when he paid for our, the penalty for our sins, we can accept that free gift of salvation. And guess what? We're right before God, aren't we? And the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned, for the judgment which came from the one offense resulted in condemnation. But the free gift which came from many offenses resulted in justification. For if by the one man's offense... Do you ever feel like they didn't need to repeat it 80 times? For if by one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness, say gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. What does God want us to do in this life? Reign. He wants us to reign in life. We who know Christ ought to be reigning in life. We shouldn't be under our circumstances. We should be over our circumstances. We need to stand and proclaim and pray and believe God and walk in His ways. We ought to be done walking, and haven't we already proven that we stink at trying to be good? But if you allow Christ to live through you, guess what? You'll be walking just where God wants you to be. You can stand up. Nobody gets in trouble here. You're free of all seven addictions. Somebody give the Lord a <laughs> clap offering. Did he free you of your, of your addiction to pecan pie? Never liked it. You never liked it? Oh, Father. 
I still like pecan, by the way. Forced by, forced by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. So as sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life through our Jesus Christ our Lord. Man, we are now, we're, we'll get into this next week, but we are, we are dead to sin Say, I'm dead to sin, but I'm alive to Christ. That's the truth about it, I'm telling you. In the, uh, I want to read a few scriptures out of Hebrews. And what he said about disobedience stuff, we, we read that in, in 2 Corinthians, the third chapter, one other time. Do you want to put that up there real quick? I don't know the exact verse, but I know. Third chapter where he talks about the ministry of condemnation, the ministry of death. 3, 7. So look at, but if the ministry of death, now I want you to see this. I, I don't want you to miss this. This is important. This is something that will help you because one of the worst things that, 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 that Christians go under all the time is condemnation and feeling bad about themselves and everything else. I would feel bad about myself, but I like me. Oh, you think God wants you to hate you? He don't want you to hate yourself. When, when, when he told us that we ought to love our neighbors, we do ourselves. Do you think that you need to hate your neighbor the way you hate yourself? No. We need to be in love, don't we? Now watch this. But if the ministry of death written and engraved on stones, what was engraved on stone? The Ten Commandments. If it was glorious that the children of Israel could, not, Israel could not look steadily on the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away, how will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? For the ministry of condemnation had glory, the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory. So I'm going to ask you a weird question. Why is it, it to this very day People want to spend their time learning the Ten Commandments rather than receiving Christ who will already lead you in obedience. You can grab a hold of the Ten Commandments and memorize them, but you're never going to live the way you ought to live by trying to follow the Ten Commandments. You can't do it. But because Christ lives on the inside of us, he'll lead us and he'll guide us and he'll lead us into all truth. Amen? Hallelujah. So, uh, for even what was made glorious had no glory in this respect because of the glory that excelled. There's another verse in there that talks about how one was fading away. Yeah. For what is passing away, if, if what is passing away, what was passing away? The law. The old covenant. For, what, for if what is passing away was glorious, what remains is much more glorious. Salvation by faith, grace, allowing God to live on the inside of you is a much more glorious experience than you getting up in the morning and rehearsing the Ten Commandments. All right. In Hebrews, the ninth chapter, in the eleventh verse, it says, but Christ came as high priest of the good things to come with the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is, not in this creation, not with the blood of boat, goats and calves, but with his own blood he entered the most holy place, and once for all, somebody say once for all, once for all. having obtained eternal redemption. Eternal redemption. Say my redemption is eternal. It won't fade away. It won't go away. God will never pull it away. Nobody can snatch me out of God's hand. I belong to him. Hallelujah. Isn't that good? Now, I like, I like the 14th verse. It says, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience? Now, he's talking to the Hebrews here. Now, watch this. Cleanse your conscience from dead works. 
to serve God. Now, what you're going to like is, even though he's dealing with this here, did you know when we get in, into Romans and we get to 9 through 11, it's around in there, it's going to talk about that the, the Jews still have great value in the kingdom of God. They're still God's people. Amen? But whether he already told us in the first part that whether you're a Greek, serving idols, walking away from where God wants you to be, he said they knew God but would not recognize him as God. And then, then in the second chapter, he starts talking about the Jew. And what's he say? About both groups of people, whether the Jew or Gentile, Greek, didn't make any difference. What was the thing? He said they're without excuse. They're without excuse. The religious man can't say, I'm religious, man. I'll go to the heart of God. If I stand in front of the Lord and say, listen, are you impressed because I went to the heart of God? You know what he'll say? Nah. <laughs> are you impressed that I know Jesus, your son, Father? Oh, yes. Because there come a time at the end of time when he'll be looking in the Lamb's Book of Life. And if your name's not in the Lamb's Book of Life, you won't spend an eternity with him. And I could stand up there and tell him that I'm a member of a certain church or I've been raised in a certain way or all the good works I did, but if my name's not written in the Lamb's Book of Life, I'm lost. Now, somebody said, you mean when you accept Christ, your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Let me come against that and say, when Jesus went to the cross, every name went into the Lamb's Book of Life. And the only way it'll be blotted out is if you live your life and reject him. If you live your life and go like this, said, I'm not going to accept Christ. I love the way I'm living. You end your life without accepting Christ, and your name will be blotted out of the Lamb's Book of Life. Jesus got it put in, but you can get it taken out by not, by, by not saying yes to him. Man, I love the Lord, and he's got good plans for us. Amen? Then in the 10th chapter of the book of Hebrews, uh, it talks about, well, let's go to the 8th verse. Previously saying, sacrifice and offering, burnt offerings and offerings for sin you did not desire. This is actually Jesus talking to his, to his father. Nor had pleasure in them, which are offered according to the law. Then he said, Behold, I have come to do your will. Jesus saying this to the father, I have come to do your will. Oh God. And then watch this. He takes away the first that he may establish the second. I'm not under the old covenant. The Jew who accepts Christ is not under the old covenant. Amen? Amen. We're under a new covenant. And then in the 17th verse, he says, Then he adds, Their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Now where there is remission of these, there is no longer an offering for sin. And in the 26th verse, I'm going to tell you this verse only because I had a guy that was a longtime friend that came up and asked me about this. He, been in this church for years and years. He said, what about this verse, the 26th? For if we sin willfully after we've received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. And he came and told me that. He said, and he was just crying. He said, I don't get that. So if I, no, don't misunderstand that. That's a very simple explanation for that. All he's telling you, because he's talking to the Hebrews, is that if you have received the knowledge that Jesus was the final sacrifice and then you reject him, you can't go offer an animal to take care of your sins. That's done. Because there remains no more sacrifice for sins. Why? Jesus has already made that final blood sacrifice. So I want to remind you today that if you've not said yes to Jesus, there's no better time than right now to say yes to Jesus. Membership in this church won't do it. I love this church. I'd go to this church if I wasn't the pastor because I like, like hanging around with you folks. 
But can I tell you this? None of us are going to make heaven apart from Christ. So if you've never made that decision that I belong to God and I'm going to serve him, this is the time to do it. Amen? Hallelujah. Well, he made him who knew no sin to become sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. Are we glad about this this morning? And let's stand to our feet. One thing you get when you come here, you get people teaching directly from the Bible. I like the Bible. I've not found a better book. When I first started out, I tried preaching out of the Harley Manual. And it seems like nobody responded to that. So, <laughs> Sophie did? Oh, that's good. You're all that matters, little girl. Hallelujah. Before we get started, I want you to do this. I want every head bowed and every eye closed. I generally don't do this, but I want to do this this morning. If you came here this morning, you say, listen, I've been to church many times. But if I knew my death was impending, I'm not sure that I'd spend an eternity with God. And I want to make sure I'm saved. I want to make sure of that this morning. If that's you, just raise your hand up just real quick and put it back down. Amen. Hallelujah. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to pray a prayer together. I want us all to pray this prayer, even if you didn't bring your hand up. And you who raised your hand, if, you are, if you're making that decision today, I want to tell you something. You will be held and sealed by the Holy Spirit of the redemption till the end of time. Are you glad about that this morning? Hallelujah. Let's say this prayer to God. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus to pay the penalty for my sin. I'm so glad he went to that cross for me, was buried, and rose victorious over sin. I thank you for the victory that I have through Jesus. I receive Jesus right now as my Lord and Savior. Jesus, come change me. My life is yours. And from this moment forward, I'll put my trust in you and only you. In Jesus' name, amen. Give him a clap offering. We're going to have baptisms again. We'll set the date you know, like he said, on the 19th is a leadership meeting where we'll set a lot of dates on that date. And uh, it'll be right after church. Is that next Sunday? I never know what day it is. What's my name? You know, I, I, I tried to tease Debbie one time, and I told her, I said, uh, uh, I called her up. And I got it right here. Thank you. Come on forward and get your communion elements. You don't have to be a member of the church to take communion with us. So I called her up. I said, whose number is this? She know you, you know who this is. This is me. I said, well, where am I? I started putting on this act for her. She wasn't impressed. I tried to act that I didn't know where I was, who I was, and where I was going. But she didn't go for that. So. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Oh, th when you pick up your kids rem this morning, remember... What the word of the day is a job well done. A job well done. When you ask them, what's the big idea for today? They'll tell you, a job well done. Amen.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And thank you, Jeanette, for making this bread. Man, I went through that bread at home. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. What can wash away my sin? You know that, don't you? Don't you sing it in early service? Oh. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Let's raise the bread up. Say it with me. Thank you, Jesus, for your broken body. It is for my healing, my spouse's healing, my children's healing. Thank you that by your stripes, by the beatings you bore, by the lashes which fell on your back, we are completely healed. I believe and I receive. Jeanette's going to have to go here forever because I can't go back to the oyster crackers now. Raise our cup. Thank you, Jesus, for the new covenant cut in your blood. Your blood has brought me forgiveness. Wash me from every sin. I thank you that your blood has made me righteous. And as I drink, I celebrate and partake of the inheritance of the righteous, which is preservation, healing, wholeness, and prosperity. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Well, how do you guys like my town topic shirt? Doesn't that look appropriate for Sunday morning? <laughs> Huh? I love town topics. Sometimes I just ride my motorcycle down there and sit down and have myself a hamburger. You know, their, their breakfast is expensive there. Yeah. Hallelujah. Well, you know what the Bible says. I say it every Sunday, but the Bible says in James 3, this tongue. Oftentimes with this tongue we bless God, but we curse man who was made in God's image. My brethren, it ought not be so. So we want to leave this place today with a blessing. Father, I just speak a blessing on everyone here. In the six major areas of life, business, home, social, physical, mental, and spiritual, 
pour out your love, your power, your grace, your spirit in such a mighty way. Then the rest of the world sees them. They'll say, surely these people have been with Jesus. <laughs>